I can't do this, Jay. Where are you? A place with walls. The old group home. It's for sale. I'm just gonna lie down right beside you. No, no, get up. Do you need to go to the hospital? I fucked up. I thought this was an excellently crafted piece. It really captured the support and deep empathy of those ties that bind us together and what it means to be a support and to be, um, to love in addiction and in, um, in finding one's identity. Uh, the performances were deeply truthful. The connection between the two were was so palpable, and you could feel the history between them as well. Um, and there was something about when the ex-partner showed up on the screen, I could feel the danger dissipate. I felt like we were in good hands. And uh, just was a really heartfelt and nuanced look at, yeah, partnership through addiction and uh, through transition, and but also the limitations of of being a support of that final image of the actor pulling themselves to safety and with with that love and support knowing that they have the strength to to make those steps forward and to make those changes i thought was uh extremely powerful uh yeah what a, a brilliant final image for us to uh to meditate on Excellently done. I thought the acting was absolutely amazing and trashed. Um, a really high stakes scene, and I just thought the acting really carried the scene forward. Um, amazing acting on both ends of the phone call. Uh, even just the way that the camera angles uh, were kind of like a third person, it felt like we were eavesdropping in on the conversation. Um, just hopping back between the two places where they were. And I thought the exposition worked well and created a story arc between the characters and their story together and their issues. Um, so I thought that was overall really well Trash done. This was dope, yo. My emotions, oh my goodness. That actress, both of those actresses, oh my goodness. Yo, y'all had me by the throat, like gripping. Um, excellent cinematography, excellent use of handheld chicken cam. Motivated handheld shaky cam. Um, excellent production design. Like, I really felt the grime, even the performances. Like, when I tell you, like, I felt it, you know, really well done. Great directing, great writing, great acting, all around masterpiece. I thought this one uh, came out really well. You know, it's, it's clearly a, like, a low budget short. Like, I think they did a great job at kind of leaning on the actors' performances because they're both uh, really solid. I think that their chemistry was decent. Um, and, yeah, you know, it's basically when you boil it down, your entire thing is a phone call. And so um, it's important to kind of vary the shots and and keep the filmer, uh, the, the audience interested in it. And I think that the filmmakers did a decent job, uh, you know, I would love to see them kind of take a swing at a uh, like a larger story and or like for a you know uh, yeah either way something more substantial either like longer or anything. I was really but, struck by the filmmaker's ability to show such a strong emotional journey through in one room through a single conversation. I really saw the phone in this film as a lifeline. And I think that that rings true for a lot of us in our lives. I felt that the overall message that I was thinking about leaving the film was the idea of being loved for who you are, regardless of your gender. And I felt that the other thing that struck me watching the film was how difficult it is to be there for someone who is struggling with so much outside of the relationship that you are in with them. And I think that that 
is something that can resonate with a lot of kind of a heavy well. piece. I'm not going to lie. Um, it was a person who was transitioning who, from what I could tell, had also relapsed and they're calling their ex um, and not only, you know, presenting the fact that they were assaulted and they killed someone in self-defense, um, which the ex tells them it does not look good for them. Um, they also bring up the question of, you know, was I not good enough? Why did you leave me? Why didn't this work out? Um, it, it presents like a lot of uh, heavy situations to the plot, but also a lot of really difficult questions as well. Um, you know, at the end, uh, this person is the this person who's transitioning. They get their final bit of closure before death. Um, or from what I could tell was, was them dying at the end of the scene before the authorities got there. Um, but finding out that their ex did love them and loved them no matter who they were, um, and no matter who they are. Um, it was a re yeah, it was just a really interesting story. And I think it also highlighted a lot of uh, the trauma that trans individuals have to deal with and, a you know, cases of assault. Uh, it, it was dedicated to assault and murder victims at the end. And um, putting that in, in this scope, as well as letting them know that they're loved, is a really important message. And um, I'm really glad that, that you put that bit of closure at the end for this character, and hopefully gave that closure to some trans individuals out there who may need to hear it and that's so so important so very it's good job he's filled with so much devastation in it but also so much love um the depravity that so many people in the lgbtq community have to endure is really staggering and we see some of that abuse and violence uh, displayed here but again we also see the power of queer love and how it can comfort us in times of great distress and just feeling like the most downtrodden. So I think that when examining this piece, that balance should really be admired. Yes, it is dark. Yes, it goes to uncomfortable places, but it also displays a great degree of love.